And my dudes, hey, yeah, we're back, man. And we are painting more Fortnite environments. This one's gonna be done in about two hours. How is that possible? Because I'm painting like a programmer, okay? So programmers, they don't like to repeat themselves. They don't like to write the same code for multiple different uh, enemies. They'll write one physics code that applies to all enemies, for example, and then they just change the weight of the character. So we're doing the same thing uh, with assets for an environment uh, concept art or, or a landscape, if you will. And so by doing this, we only have to ha ever really have to paint one pine tree, for example, and then we copy and paste that and then adapt it to whatever the current lighting situation or composition may need. So to get started here, I've created a canvas and I've sketched out my horizon. If you've been following my channel or the stylized landscape workshop, you will recognize my, my studies, which I've put together into one uh, components image, uh, one components page, and then I just drop in the trees. Uh, this one particularly I think is going to be a nice showcase tree. It looks more interesting and unique than the other. And then I'm going to drop in the pine tree over on the left side. And just like on those cooking infomercials, I've already prepared myself a nice sky there. So check out my channel. If you, if you don't recognize these assets, then you haven't been subscribed to my channel. You should be watching my channel if you want to be able to do this. Uh, so I've dropped in the sky and the, let's see, yeah, the rock, the big boulder that I created. And then I just find like a nice position for it that works with the composition that I had sketched out. So bam, we're already like 50% done uh, just from using these com uh, components that I've created. A quick grass plane on another layer there, and we've got ourselves a nice uh, grassy meadow. We got a nice uh, grassy plane. I'm gonna extend the canvas out because I like a nice wide shot for an establishing uh, landscape. As you paint in the mid-ground and background, make sure you got that uh, atmospheric diffusion. If you don't know what that is, then watch my previous video. Now I've got all my components on individual uh, layers so that I can tweak them, I can uh, transform them, I can skew them, I can liquefy them, I can stretch them. Hell, even my mountain back there is on another layer, so I can just adjust the size of that real easy. My uh, path here, I've got that on another layer. That could be a river or it could be a road, ah, whatever you want to make. Next up, I lay down a bunch of... Uh, lay down a bunch of bushes. These are just clusters, mostly just doing the silhouette. Uh, now it would have been nice if I already had some bushes, you know, built as a component or a custom brush, maybe that just painted out my bushes for me. I decided that was going to be a, uh, a dirt trail instead of a road. And I think that was a good choice. By having all this on separate layers, I'm easily able to just use the mask tool to make a selection of just my foreground and then paint in like a Pokemon trail around the outside of my dirt path. And then also by switching over to the grass layer, uh, I just have it on a, a layer. The grass is a layer. So hitting it with a big fat airbrush, I could just be as messy as I want and make sure that I got my focal point in the center and bam, there you got it. I can't paint outside of it because the layer is masked, it's locked. Because all of my trees are on different layers, I can slide some into the background. I can warp it using the liquify tool, which I've covered here on my YouTube channel, and then just create a little bit more atmospheric diffusion to separate the forms so that my trees in the foreground have more contrast, but the trees in the background have less contrast by creating variations in uh, uh, size and scale and then warping it and then using the transform tool, I can get a lot of variety out of what is essentially just one pine tree. This is just one pine tree, but I'm getting a lot of mileage out of it because I'm gonna copy paste it. And then by shrinking it down, I can add it to the background as, uh, as a background tree, which also gives a little bit more of a sense of scale and depth to the image. And it's also just reusing as much as possible. So at this point, I'm about 30 minutes into the composition, 30 minutes into the piece. And it's almost like I could show this to a client and be like, hey, what do you think of a shot like this? And they could go, yeah, well, maybe, maybe not. Maybe make some changes here or add a point of interest or whatever. But at least you've got everything pretty much established. Then I go in and started adding in all the dirt and the mud and the grime. Now, Fortnite specifically, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned it yet in this video. My big goal right now is that I'm trying to master the Fortnite art style. I'm trying to really get this down so that uh, I can dissect the art style for you and make it clear as to like, oh, this is the distinction. This is how they do it for Fortnite. This is how they do it for other games. But right now the focus is on like a Fortnite style of concept art. And what they like to do with Fortnite is just make everything bright and saturated. Everything is just has color everywhere. So that mud, even the mud has to get a lot more orange. I'm using some custom brushes to get that grassy kind of a flow. And on the rocks, I'm just using some of the the rocks that I had painted from my rock study from a couple of episodes ago here on my YouTube channel, and I'm just reusing them, repurposing them. I skew the rocks into a more of a flowy kind of a system. For the grass, it's mostly using a custom grass brush. 
uh, which is a combination of the chisel brush mixed with uh, some other brushes that I use just for a little bit of grainy noise and a little bit more of that natural acrylic paint look. I'd say that about 75% of this piece was used from composite studies that I had done from skies that I had painted with clouds to trees that were built uh, or painted from studies of actual 3D models from Fortnite so that I can make sure that it's accurately depicting the style, the distinct style of the Fortnite kind of a, a concept art that they use. Next, I hit it with an overlay layer so that I can blast out some of my uh, highlights and hit, hit some surfaces with some direct sun so that's gonna bloom it out. And then that also allows me to make the shadows really rich, a very distinct aspect of the Fortnite art style. Then we get the shadow pass while we're at it. We're doing some lighting and we make sure that we've got a little bit of under lighting on the hills in the background. So it feels like there's a little bit of mist where the sky is just bouncing blue light onto the mist of those hills in the midground. And then we're just gonna address all the details. The rest is just straight up painting, but there's really only about 30 minutes of actual painting going into this process. In fact, because I front loaded everything with studies and components that I can plug and play directly into my concepts, I would say that I could generate probably three paintings like this in a single day. What's beautiful about that is that a lot of times as a concept artist, you're not hired to paint landscapes. A lot of times as a concept artist in games, you're hired to create unique points of interest or structures like castles or towers or whatever. But spending a lot of time on the things like rocks and trees and grassy plains, that's stuff that could be really automated, you know, using this process. It's stuff that you don't, it doesn't take a lot of design sense. It's, I don't want to say it's the easy part, but it's the easy part. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, man, I'm, I'm lazy. Okay, no, I'm not lazy, but I say that jokingly, but I'm, I want to be efficient with my time. I don't want to spend a ton of time painting unique trees. If you were to paint every one of these trees unique, uh, as, a, as a painting, uh, then you would spend probably 20 or 30 hours. And some purists out there are gonna go, well, that's just, you know, that's real art. But you know what? Video game production uh, doesn't want real art. What they want is efficiency. Uh, why hire somebody that's gonna take, you know, a week to do one painting or two weeks to do one painting when you could hire somebody who can do two or three of these kind of uh, landscape paintings a day and then still have time to design unique points of interest in towers and structures and gas stations and farms and tractors and all the stuff that they would put into this world. You know, why not hire the guy who can do 10 times the amount of work? That's how you get paid more. That's how you get those flashier jobs. That's how you get the big, you get to roll with the big boys. Damn, I'm giving away a lot on my channel recently. <laughs> I hope you're subscribed. Like all this stuff is really easy stuff. I've had the pleasure of working on some of the world's biggest games and I gotta change my art style all the time depending on the project I'm working on. And man, this is exactly how I learn how to do whatever art style I need to. I could work on Tomb Raider tomorrow and it really wouldn't be that hard for me to just make that transition to the different art style. I know that's hard for people to understand, to like grasp that concept. Like, oh, you know, he's a stylized guy, but. When I started doing YouTube, people are like, what are you doing on YouTube? You should be working at Blizzard. And I was like, I am working at Blizzard. I can do both, you know, I can do both things. Now I was working on Diablo 3, which is a dark fantasy game. And then I was also working on a very cartoony uh, comic book, stylized comic book. And people just couldn't make that connection that it was the same artist. But uh, one of my heroes is a guy named Paul Lesane. And uh, he was a, a concept artist on many uh, really great animated films, but he's also a really damn good realistic, photorealistic painter as well. The guy's a beast. And the more art styles you can dissect and understand and learn how to paint, uh, especially if you can do it with efficiency, like what I'm showing you in this video, well then um, you got it, you got it made. You'll never run out of uh, op job opportunities. So what you're watching at this point in the painting is the actual painting process. <laughs> This is where I actually go in and do the real painting where it's like, actually, you know, here's some grass blades and, and here's the lighting. And, and uh, I make sure that I add some nice edges where you've got grass flowing over into the shadows and make sure there's nice vignetting so that the light is mostly hitting that central area. Make sure that the lighting is consistent across all of the surfaces, adding in some growth and like, you know, this is how the weeds would grow and here's the kind of plants that would grow around here and the kind of like flowers that might liven up the scene with little hits of orange and yellow in those shadow colors, which brings the, the whole piece together because you've got color cords going throughout. And then we add a little bit of life. We've got birds flying through the air, making sure that the contrast makes them stand out against the darker blue of the sky and making sure that those trees in the background don't conflict with the values of the trees and the bushes in the middle 
middle ground and then making sure that the the rocks and the shadows have a, a proper level of desaturation to them and making sure there's little hits of blue in all the shadow because the sky is blue and that's your fill light, your your floodlight into your shadows. And bing, bang, and a boom, after a couple hours, you got a piece that looks about like this. If you would like to watch every step of how I did this. You could do this in like a week, probably less, depending on how quickly you learn. I show you the entire process of how to dissect the Fortnite art style, which by the way, I worked on. I, I My team at Aquatic Moon had done several concept pieces. I can finally show that, check it out. It's on the screen right now. Anyway, I'm gonna teach you how to do this art style in my stylized landscape workshop. That's. 10 videos, actually it's about 12 videos, including a lot of real-time content. I'm trying to do everything in real time. It's very hand-holdy. It's very like, use this layer, use this brush, use this technique kind of stuff where I break everything down in great detail. And then I show you how to put it all together into pieces like this so you too can triple your speed at which you can paint, you know, stylized landscapes. And I think this will apply to a lot of other art styles as well. So I think even if you don't paint in this art style, I think it would be useful for you. These are these are done in Photoshop, but I think there are a lot of techniques that can be carried over into other programs and apps as well as other apps catch up to what Photoshop can do. Okay, so uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, next week, we're going to be adding on to this course as well. If you want to be a concept artist in the game industry, or if you just want to get better at painting, I do hope that you subscribe. I have lots of videos just like this one here on my channel every Wednesday. So until next time, I'll catch you manana bon. Ciao, baby. Oh, yeah.